Hello and welcome to this week's Real Estate Report on the Finance News Network. I'm Melissa Beaumont-Lee. This week we continue our series looking at suburbs with the most affordable median prices in 2010, with a focus on two suburbs in Tasmania. We speak with the President of the Real Estate Institute of Western Australia, Alan Burke, about the Perth suburbs to watch out for this year. And in our tax tip, we look at construction expenditure that can be claimed as a deduction. But first, let's catch up on the latest property news with Lelda Smiths. The latest Housing Industry Association Geldwin New Home Sales Report has shown the impact of Australia's wet weather conditions. After rising 2.5% in January, new home sales across the nation edged up a mere 0.6% in February. The lift was underpinned by a 0.9% rise in sales in New South Wales, while Victorian sales increased 2.9% over the month. In Queensland, sales fell 13.3%, with the natural disasters in the state no doubt having a significant impact, according to HIA. The association says the year has begun with volumes well down on stimulus-driven highs of 2009 and early 2010, and has forecast that the year ahead may be weaker. But HIA Chief Economist Harley Dale has confirmed interest rates are on hold for now and says this is a tick in the box for the housing industry. This week we continue our series looking at suburbs with the most affordable median prices in 2010 with a focus on two suburbs in Tasmania. First let's look at Gagebrook including the area of Herdsman's Cove within the suburb of Gagebrook. Herdsman's Cove is technically the most affordable and may be locally classified as a suburb but strictly speaking it's in fact officially a part of the suburb of Gagebrook and Gagebrook is classified as the second most affordable suburb. So let's focus on the suburb of Gagebrook including within it Herdsman's Cove. Gagebrook is located 22 kilometres north of Hobart's central business district. The suburb has a population of 2,877 in the 2006 census. Gagebrook is located on the eastern shore of the Derwent River between the suburbs of Bridgewater and Old Beach. The suburb has many dwellings built in the 1970s for public housing. Many have now been sold privately. The majority are three bedroom brick veneer houses. The suburb has two primary schools, Herdman's Cove Primary School and Gagebrook Primary School. Turning to the figures. Houses in Herdsman's Cove recorded the capital's most affordable median price in 2010 of $140,000. 21 properties were sold in the year. Houses in Gagebrook recorded the capital's second most affordable median price in 2010 of $146,000. 30 properties were sold in the year. Our next suburb is Clarendon Vale. It's located 15 kilometres east of Hobart CBD. With a population of 1,464 in the last census, it was also originally a public housing area in the 1970s. Today, just like Gagebrook, much of the housing stock has been sold to private owners. The older stock is made up of three bedroom brick veneer houses. Many have been rendered. The area also has a mix of newer stock in private housing areas. Clarendon Vale Public School is within the suburb and Rockaby High School is nearby. Turning to the figures, Houses in Clarendon Vale recorded the capital's third most affordable median price in 2010 of $169,000. 23 properties were sold in the year. Let's now turn to our interview. This week we speak with the President of the Real Estate Institute of Western Australia, Alan Burke, about the Perth suburbs to watch out for this year. I think the investment areas are those that have got the subdivision potential and certainly near arterial routes. I'm keeping a very close look at um, between the CBD and the airport. I believe that'll be a very important route as we see more fly-in and fly-out workers. And many of those workers don't want to drive miles away from the airport. So the ability to come off the plane and, and move into your lock-and-leave style of dwelling, I think it's going to be very important. So um, areas within 5k of the CBD and within about 5k of the airport, I think it's going to do very well. And now to the tax tip of the week from Depreciator, the tax depreciation schedule specialists. This week we look at construction expenditure that can be claimed as a deduction. A deduction is allowed for expenditure as a result of a building if you contract a builder to construct the building on your land. 
Some costs that you may include in construction expenditure for a deduction are preliminary expenses such as architect's fees, engineering fees and the cost of foundation excavations, payments for the construction of retaining walls, fences and in-ground swimming pools, payments to carpenters, bricklayers and other tradespeople for construction of the building. As always, do remember to consult with a tax accountant or tax professional before making any tax related decisions. And that's the Real Estate Report for Monday the 4th of April. Thanks for joining us. I'm Melissa Beaumont-Lee for the Finance News Network.